Welcome to the shear walls online tutorial videos. In this tutorial about shear wall deflection, we will describe the difference between using the nonlinear four term deflection equation from CSA 086 14, clause 11.7.1.2, and the new option of using the simplified linear three term approximation. We will also talk about why this three term equation is useful. The next video will further demonstrate this feature inside the software with an example. New to the Canadian version 10 is an option to use the three-term linear deflection equation instead of the CSA 086 four-term deflection equation. The three-term deflection equation has been adapted from the American Wood Council Special Design Provision for Wind and Seismic Standard, commonly known as PIDWIS, and is essentially a linearization of the four-term deflection equation. These graphs represent the load displacement curve for both equations for a wood sheathed shear wall. By default, the more accurate four term deflection equation is selected. To use the three term deflection equation, select Always Linearize Deflection Equation. The three term equation is a simplification of the four term deflection equation where the shear and null slip components of the four term equation are combined into one shear component. This equation makes it necessary to calculate an apparent shear wall shear stiffness, GA, which is dependent on the shear capacity of the shear wall, the shear through thickness of the panel, and the nail slip associated with the nails on the wall. The three term deflection equation approximates the shear and nail slip component when a shear wall is loaded to 100% of its shear resistance. The nail slip component in the four term deflection equation makes the equation nonlinear. But if you simplify the equation to the three term deflection equation, it becomes linear. This speed width figure illustrates the difference between the three term and the four term deflection equations. Notice that the two equations meet at a point where the shear wall has reached 100% of its design capacity. In other words, if a shear wall is loaded to its design capacity, the deflection would be calculated to be the same using either equation. It also shows that for forces lower than the design capacity, the three term will approximate a higher deflection than the more accurate nonlinear calculation. Why is linearizing the deflection equation useful anyway, especially from a software perspective? Let's take a look at this first example. This is a single 4 meter shear resisting segment with wood structural panels on the exterior side of the wall and gypsum wallboard on the interior surface of the wall. This slide compares the deflection results using the four term and three term deflection equations. Notice that for the four term equation, no load is distributed to the gypsum wallboard on the interior side. Why is this? Well, the software is programmed to equalize the deflection between the exterior and interior sheathing materials. Out of the four terms of the equation, the only terms that vary by the shear force are the shear and null slip components. Sometimes, it is impossible to converge on a solution, and the program bounces back and forth between two completely different solutions. Also, the slip term for gypsum is independent of the amount of force, while the slip term for wood sheathing does depend on the force. As a result, it is not possible to equalize deflection between the wood sheathing and gypsum, so all the load is distributed to the stiffer wood sheathing. So, using the three-term equation avoids this issue, and force will be distributed to both sides of the wall.